Hello everyone, welcome to Simulation TV, Simulation in Action, Mold Flow. Today we'll be covering a thermoplastic venting analysis. My name is Sean Gedman and I'd like to take you through this exercise. So our problem description for today is we're going to look at modeling vents for a thermoplastic injection molding analysis and we're going to focus on the windscreen of this motorcycle here. Some key learning ob objectives that we'd like to cover during the course of this presentation will be, of course, the importance of simulating vents, the analysis requirements, how to model a single vent, and then also how to model a perimeter vent. So first off, why would we consider venting? So three key points here that I'll make is basically it will predict the effects of the air pressure within your cavity on the flow of your polymer, which can be pretty influential in certain cases. It aids in selecting a suitable vent location or helping you design your tool. And it also calculates the pressure within the air traps remaining in the part. So if you're having issues with what we call dieseling or burning of your part, uh, we can take a look at some of these pressure results and, and maybe the temperature results in those regions to see if, if this is likely to occur. So on to some requirements that we'll need to make sure we meet to run this analysis is first pick a supported analysis type. So from those we have the regular injection molding module, over molding, the reactive molding, or microchip encapsulation. From there we have to run a fill pack analysis. It has to be a 3D mesh. We have to have the vent location specified of course and that option to run the venting analysis checked within our advanced options. So individual vent settings, what we we'll wanna look at is you'll see there's a thickness, a length, and a width to specify for your vent. So the length of course is gonna be the land of it and the width and the thickness you can see in this image. Another thing you'll specify is the exit pressure. So what you can do is a few things here. If you put a negative value in here, it's going to simulate a vacuum on that vent. If you put zero, which is the default setting, it's going to use atmospheric pressure. And then, of course, you could put a positive value in here, which would simulate a resistance to that gas escaping through the vent. And some things, we'll, before we get into the demo, I'll kind of cover some of these. Um, the previous screen you mentioned, you might know, so that's for a single location or a single vent. This one will cover perimeter venting, or what we call grouping, where we can actually uh, link several vent locations together to form one large vent. Now, to access some of these settings, what we'll do is right in your fill page, you'll go to Advanced Options. We'll click on your solver parameters. And what this will do is bring up your vent tab uh, or your vent settings. Now in here you'll have a couple options. We can, uh, for grouping, you can group them based off the property or you can group them based off of the property and the, uh, the connectivity of the vents proximity. Or you can have this off. If it's off, it's going to uh, assume you're just using a single vent location and this is the default that you would have. Okay, so as I mentioned we're gonna do this analysis on our our motorcycle windshield or windscreen here so here's our part I'll isolate it into the single component. Now of course we've we have our requirements met here but just to recap we have part modeled as 3D. We're set thermoplastic injection molding in this case. Fill pack analysis our materials are selected, everything there. So the next thing would be to specify our actual vent location here, which will look much like this. And to do that, we're just going to go into our boundary conditions. Select venting location. and we'll just pick a node. And you can see that put our vent right on the part. To adjust some of the properties or the size, we're just gonna right click on that after it's highlighted, go in the properties. 
and you can see it's using global settings or you can specify something unique to this part and edit all your values there, your exit pressure, your thickness, length, width, et cetera. Now, another requirement we need to make sure we meet, as I mentioned, is we need to turn on or enable this option within the solver. So you can go into your process settings, advanced options, venting analysis and there's just this box we have to check up here to make sure we perform our venting analysis and then of course if you're going to group them you need to enable grouping here so that's what a single vent would look like here for grouping you can see I've specified several locations along the perimeter of this part on the other side so we can let the gas escape out this end of the part since we're filling from this side push the gas out have proper venting in this case and you can see I selected several nodes and then the only thing difference in this case is that if we look at our process settings You can see I have grouping turned on here. So from this point, basically we're just going to run our analysis, get our results, and the, the key result you're going to see in this case is really the vent region pressure. And when you turn this on, you can animate through this result, and it's going to show you the pressure history in there as the, the polymers fill in the part here. You can see the pressure is getting a little higher as we, we fill the part further. And again, we can do a pressure reading on this or query these results to see how high the pressure is, see what the temperature of our flow front is maybe because the temperature and the pressure of the gases as the part fills, if, if it exceeds a certain threshold, a lot of times you'll see dieseling or burning in these areas. So. Hopefully you've learned something today from this episode of Simulation TV. Have a great day.